The Albanese government has announced a boost to health and medical research. It will allow patients to get easier and earlier access to potentially life-saving clinical trials and fund more research grants. Health and medical researchers, in my experience in Australia, are never content to rest on their laurels. They're constantly wanting to continue to push the envelope. And today's announcement of a package of around $1.9 billion in initiatives that will be contained in the budget the week after next will, I think, really assist health and medical researchers in Australia to do exactly that. And joining us with more live now is Professor Jonathan Karapetis, Director of the Telethon Kids Institute. Jonathan, always appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you. Can you just start by giving us a bit of an insight into the state of the medical research field in Australia? Are we batting above our average? Are we able to keep top talent here in Australia? Or is there something of a brain drain when it comes to our top researchers looking for other opportunities? Look, I guess um, it's great to see you again, Ash. I, I guess it's a, a bit of the good news and the bad news. The good news is that we absolutely do bat above our weight. We are, um, I think, ranked seventh in the world for health and medical research, which you, if you consider the size of our country and the size of the investment we make in it, that's pretty amazing. And we, of course, have incredible breakthroughs that many people will be aware of, including the Gardasil vaccine that was homegrown here in Australia. So we're very proud of what we've done in health and medical research. We do have an increased investment that's occurred in recent years from the, the Commonwealth Government through a new fund that they established a few years ago called the Medical Research Future Fund to complement the existing medical research funding that we've had. All that's good, but we still have a lot of problems. And we have big problems with coordinating our research um, investment across different sectors, not just in academia, but with industry and with bodies like the CSIRO to make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. We have a real crisis facing the workforce in medical research, particularly the young scientists who are seeing that it's an incredibly competitive environment, that they're not necessarily being supported with job security for the future. And so we, we do have a risk of those scientists turning away from science, and we're seeing that already. And we have a real hodgepodge of funding sources. So the answer is yes, we do lose scientists overseas to places like the United States, places like Europe, where they've got much more secure funding environments. But we are creating an ecosystem, and I think there's a real opportunity for us to bring those scientists back and to continue to build Australia as a destination for medical research. I wanted to pick your brain on clinical trials. Many of us, sadly, would have had a friend or family member experience getting gravely ill and, and desperately really looking for, for cutting-edge options. Often people diagnosed with rare conditions are, are very keen to be involved in clinical trials. How hard can these trials be to access here in Australia? Tell us a bit about this national one-stop shop for clinical trials. How does, how does it all work? Yeah, it's, a, it's an important area. So firstly, Australia is a great place to do clinical trials. We are acknowledged around the world as a place where we do high quality science, where, um, where companies with their new products, particularly these new um, cutting edge products for rare diseases, for cancers, can come and they can get access to populations who have these conditions um, and can get really good data on their products, which can then lead to licensure and, and, and greater use for the patients themselves. This is how you get access to the latest possible treatments. The problem is we have a system in Australia where we have so many different states and territories that operate in different ways. We have um, obviously a massive geography. So, uh, for example, I'm based over in Western Australia and our, our people, if they can afford it or if they can uh, are aware of it, might have to go over to the east to get access to a clinical trial. It becomes a difficult regulatory environment, a difficult environment to navigate. And so the Commonwealth Government, to their credit, have really looked at how we can streamline this. And the idea of a one-stop shop is a wonderful idea where there will be a single place. It'll also be done through a public-facing website so that the patients and families can find out about the latest clinical trials for particular conditions and find out whether they might be eligible. Um, hopefully, it will streamline the approvals process. Some of these um, some of these processes, you need to go to every single organisation, hospital or research organisation and go through multiple ethics approvals and governance approvals. That can take years and can actually be a disincentive for companies to invest in these, let alone for researchers to want to participate in it. So I think it's a one wonderful initiative, this one-stop shop.